Hello and welcome to Everybody Pulls the Tarp. I'm your host, Andrew Moses. With me today, a very special guest, the newly minted head coach for the Duke University women's basketball team, Kara Lawson. Welcome to the show, Kara. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. So there's another Coach K in town, I guess. Is that what they're saying? I don't know about that. Uh, I think there's probably just still one Coach K, but I'm certainly uh, excited about the opportunity. Uh, what, a, what a chance for a first-year head coach to be able to work uh, alongside one of the all-time great college coaches, not just basketball, but all sports. I'm definitely going to lean on him as a resource for sure um, because he's seen so much during his story career. Absolutely. So so you were named head coach at Duke July 11th. So I guess nine or 10 days. What, what has the last nine or 10 days been, coach? What has it been like? It's been a whirlwind. Um, just trying to get a, a, a grasp of our program uh, in its current state, uh, trying to get a grasp of what, what we need to do um, to allow our current players to come back to campus, uh, to get on the, on the road recruiting, uh, not on the road, uh, you know, real, really on the road, but to, to call players and, and let them know and introduce myself um, as, as the new coach at Duke. And um, then, of course, all the other parts of being a college head coach, you touch so many different parts of the university, whether it's faculty, whether it's administration, whether it's alumni, whether it's, um, you know, donors and boosters. I mean, all of those things, um, all those people in the last nine days, I've talked to to a lot of all those groups. Sure. So so you, I've, I've heard you say that that the Duke head coaching job is a dream come true. Why 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 Duke? Why Duke for you? Well, Duke has a unique blend of high level academics to top 10 academic institution in the country. It's one of the finest academic institutions in the world. And then you combine that with a world-class uh, basketball experience. Uh, Duke is the biggest college basketball brand in the world. It just is. Everybody knows Duke basketball. And you have an opportunity to, to play in the ACC, which has such a great history of the conference, and also uh, to play in Cameron Indoor Stadium, uh, which is one of the, the best arenas in the country for college basketball. So we've just said it's one of the best academic schools. It's got the best brand, global brand, for a college basketball program. One of the best arenas, if not the best in Cameron. I'll say the best, but, you know, certainly uh, other schools could argue. And then um, you, you talk about how great of a basketball experience we think we're going to be able to provide to players. Uh, I mean, it, it doesn't get any better than that, uh, not, not, not just for your first job, but for any job that you're, you're able to procure in your career uh, to be a head coach at Duke University is an incredible, incredible honor. Well, you, you come from an NBA job, assistant coach with the Celtics under Brad Stevens. And, and I saw something pretty cool on social media. The, the players at, uh, in Boston gave you a, a pretty cool farewell. Um, as I understand it, they all bought Duke women's basketball t-shirts uh, to, to say goodbye. Yeah, they surprised me. Um, we had a team meeting the evening, uh, a couple evenings before I was leaving the bubble uh, with the Celtics. And when I got up to the floor that we were having a team meeting on, um, they started to talk about how excited they were for me to go to Duke and that they had a surprise. And they brought out all of those Duke women's basketball t-shirts. And that meant a lot because of the relationships I've built with those players um, how deep they were in just a year, very close with, with so many of them. And also, uh, you know, it wasn't easy for some of them to pull it, put on a Duke shirt. Uh, it did say Duke women's basketball. So I did have some say to me that if it hadn't said women's basketball, they wouldn't put it on. But for me, they did. And uh, just appreciative of all those, uh, of all the support from those uh, young men and everything that they've done to help me in my career. Um, just being, being able to learn from them as well, you know, coach player relationship, the learning goes both ways. The learning goes both ways uh, in, in, a, in a good coach player relationship. And I certainly learned a lot from uh, my guys with the Celtics. So this show is called Everybody Pulls the Tarp. And it's based upon a philosophy that I have that great teams are powered by individuals who contribute far beyond the boundaries of their job description. It's a philosophy that I've lived by since many, many years ago, I started my career working in the front office as an intern in minor league baseball. And on the first day, I thought I was doing front office work. And they, they told me to bring some old clothes and put them in a locker. And uh, I said, why? And they said, well, 
we're going to need you to help pull the tarp in rain delays on and off the field. And I said, well, what do you mean? And they say, the big leagues, they have the same, the same size field, the same, same grass, the same dirt. But here, we only have four or five you know, uh, members of the grounds crew. Up there, they have 18, 19, 20. So everybody here has to pitch in. And it's always been a philosophy that I've lived by. And, and, and I guess as, as, I, as you think about you know, this next era in your, in your coaching career, you've, you've got to build a staff. You've got to build the, the, the right culture, at, at your culture at, at Duke. What do you look for? And how do you know that, that, that you found the players uh, that are going to do the, the little things that matter in the program? Yeah, I mean, I think relationship w- will be a relationship-based program. I think if you take the time to, to, to learn about people, if you take the time to ask questions and listen uh, when, when they're talking, I, I think you can learn a lot about somebody and their motivations, their goals, um, their, their desires. And that allows you to see if that's somebody that aligns with what you want. Uh, uh, as far as what you want and not just a player for your program, a staff member for your program, whatever it is. So that's really been, been my approach and will continue to be my approach is uh, to get to know people and see if, if we kind of have a shared, a shared vision and a shared desire to um, achieve some, some of the same things. Um, so some t- with some people um, just like relationships in life, right? Like with some people you can get to a point quick, quickly, where you know that 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 it's uh, that you're you're aligned and it's shared, and some people it takes a little bit longer. So um, you know that that's I found that to be the case uh, in any job that I've had is some people is very I'm very quick to uh, connect with, and and some people I have to work a little extra for. And um, just like you weren't afraid to pull the tarp, I'm not afraid to work a little extra for uh, somebody. How how important to the relationship building is communication? I think it's really important, uh, open and honest communication. Uh, that doesn't mean that everything that I tell you is what you want to hear. Uh, that means that everything that I tell you is open and is honest and is in your best interest. And that's, that's a challenge. I think uh, all coaches have is to, uh, you know, communicate with their players in a direct way, communicate with your players in an honest way. And there are times they may not like it. There are times they may not like you. There are times they may not want to talk to you. All of that is is a part of um, them growing and them maturing. Obviously, we're with, uh, players like 18 to 22 years old. Um, they're they're growing. They're going through a lot of growth in their life, right? A lot of emotional growth. Um, a lot of figuring out uh, kind of who they are as people. And so uh, that's a fun part to be a part of that process and to be able to help them do that. So this is obviously you've done some some international coaching and an assistant uh, in the NBA. This is your first head coaching job at this at this level. What what do you see as um, the, the 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 most significant part of the transition for you to to a head coaching role at this level? I think just handling all of all of the the constituencies that you're that you're. Um, not in charge of, but that, that you need to be able to reach out to, that you need to be able to have a relationship with. You know, in, in the NBA as an assistant coach, uh, it was it was clear where, where I was uh, supposed to help. I had certain players that I was assigned to. I had a certain part of our, our scheme that I was assigned to. And then obviously anything that Brad Stevens uh, needed me to do, um, I did. But it was it – was, kind of set forth for me. It, it wasn't something I necessarily had to create. Although you, you did have a lot of creative freedom in terms of how you, how you work with your players. When you're the head coach, you kind of set the vision um, and you chart the course. So uh, there, there's, you're doing that for your players and you're doing that for your staff. You're also doing that in conjunction with your administration, your faculty, your institution, your conference, other head coaches on campus, donors and boosters, current players, future players, which are the recruits, and past players, which are your alumni. So there's a lot of stakeholders in this, much more, many more stakeholders than, than um, you know, I had 10 days ago. Right. So being able to be open in communication with all of those people, that doesn't mean I'm going to listen to their advice on how to attack a 2-3 zone. But what that does mean is that they 
uh, have a great understanding of our vision of where we want to go and then have an investment in helping us get there through their, through their particular part of the university. And so that's where the relationship building, that's where the communication I think comes in so that they know that they're, they're, as in, they're just as important as anybody and that we're going to need the support of all of those groups uh, if we're going to be as successful as I think we can be. So one of the things um, that I've observed is that a, a lot of folks after their playing careers who, who get into TV work like you did are, are able to nicely make the transition to coaching. What, what is it you think about the, the, the work? What, what do you think that the work that you did on, on, on television uh, over the years um, helped prepare you for, for a life in coaching? Does it make a difference? Do, do you see things when you're doing TV work that maybe you didn't see as a player? Well, they're certainly not completely analogous, but what I will tell you is what it gives you is a broad spectrum of observation experiences. So I've been able to go to thousands of practices over the 16 years, um, watching the best of the best uh, conduct uh, their practice, watch the best of the best conduct their shoot arounds, coach the games, whether it was at the collegiate level uh, or the NBA level, whether it was on the men's side or the women's side. And what you do is you just have a catalog of observations uh, and you see how different coaches do different things. You learn very early that you don't have to be the same, that it's not formulaic, that different people can have different styles and still succeed. Uh, and you, you learn that there are, are different ways to, to win at the collegiate level. But then there also are similarities in terms of a culture, a standard, an environment uh, that's conducive for growth and for learning for young people. So I think it just uh, gave me uh, an opportunity to observe and a chance to see that there are a lot of different ways to do this and that the people that end up being the most successful are the ones that stay authentic to who they are and their leadership style. That's, that's a very common theme that, that I hear when I talk to leaders in any industry, but in particular coaches, the need to, to be authentic. And it, we recently had um, three-time gold medal uh, winning soccer star, Christy Rampone on this, uh, on this show. And she talked about the fact that she was named captain. And they call her Captain America. She, she captained the U.S. women's national team a record 113 times. When she was named captain, she didn't think of herself necessarily as that prototypical captain. She, she wasn't someone who was going to give a, a big, bold speech in the locker room before the game. Uh, she was more of a listener, as, as she described, uh, somebody who led by example. When, when you think about leadership, do, do you think that that uh, – that there's a, a single makeup of a leader or do you, do you see it as more of a diverse range of, of leadership skills? Yeah, I, I agree with the diverse range. I think you having observed so many teams, there's a lot of different ways to, to be a leader. Um, like I said, it's gotta be one that's authentic to you and your personality and it has to be one that resonates with the group. Um, so I think if you're authentic with your personality you, and it can resonate with the group that you're you're a part of, then you're going to be a great leader. And whatever that style is, um, will will work. So um, yeah, it's I mean most of most of when we think leadership, we all think of you kind of yelling, screaming, and getting people fired up. And and uh, you need to have energy. You need to have en energy in your program. You need to have energetic players. I do think that, but um, that's not the only way to do it. And sometimes it's good to have. Uh, multiple leaders that have different, different styles. Um, because I also think that players respond to different, different leadership styles. Um, and you know, certain players might respond to one style better. Um, and so I think it's, it's good as players and, and staff to have a different way to uh, go about leading. So you, you've been a winner at every level. Um, what, what is it in your eyes that separates a, a great team from a, a good team? Well, I think their commitment to each other is really important. Um, you know, when you have a commitment uh, to a group, uh, it's a very special thing and it's something that uh, is, is hard to break or it, it's hard to, um, it's hard to beat. It's hard to beat a team that's just really committed to each other, um, that, that understands that their value and understands their value uh, to the group. 
So I would say that the commitment to the group is really, really important uh, if you want to be a great team. Um, I would say resiliency is, is a really important trait. Anybody that's played sports understands um, it, the game doesn't go the whole time how you think it's going to go. The game doesn't go perfect the whole time. In fact, if you watch any sports documentary or, you know, any movie or whatever it is, there's the predictable, it's going terrible, we act, we might lose, we're about to lose, and then something changes and you win. And um, while it's not always, uh, you know, that, that – um, movie like in terms of uh, the, the progression, I, I think any team through a course of a long season is going to have adversity and uh, any game that you play in is going to have its share of struggles. And so uh, players and teams that have that resilient quality of being able to, in the face of that, still execute and still have a great optimism um, that, that they'll be able to turn the game around and turn the play around. I think is a, is a great trait as well for a group to have. Do, do you think that teams and individuals have to be knocked down a few times and, and, and have some misfortune to really build that resiliency or is, is it just natural? Yeah, I definitely think that you have to face adversity to build resiliency, but that doesn't always mean you have to face adversity within your current situation. Um, there's a lot of people that have faced adversity their whole life and that's made them who they are. Uh, that's made them resilient. They don't need to go to college and face it again in order to, to have that quality. So I think I think um, that's something that can be built before you can get to, to a place like Duke. But I also think that uh, that's something we can help enhance in young people um, is that resilient quality um, just to continue to have great belief in yourself as a player and then in our group. You've, you've been around so many great leaders in your career, Kara. Um, Obviously, you, you, you played for, for Coach Pat Summit, the legendary Pat Summit um, at Tennessee. What, what, what was that experience like, and what did you learn from her? It was a great experience. Uh, Pat Summit changed my life. I mean, just her standards, the competitive environment uh, that was practice every day. Uh, it was intense, uh, and she came, at, came after you if you weren't bringing uh, the necessary uh, – effort you weren't bringing the necessary competitiveness she she let you know about it and that uh, having to be held to that standard every day for four years ingrains that in you and it, it it almost allows you to have it yourself you're on autopilot when you leave there because you, you have it every day you have it inside of you and and you don't expect you don't accept anything less and playing for her as uh, such a great leader uh, and a great coach has definitely shaped uh, how I approach uh, my daily life. And because it's shaped how I approach my daily life, there's no question it'll shape how I approach uh, this new job. Well, now, now you get to, to, to be around another great leader who we talked about a little bit at the beginning of the, of the show, uh, Coach K. Um, what, what, have, what have your interactions been like with him so far? And, 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 and how do you guys, you know, how do you expect to work together um, to, 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 to have both programs cutting down nets together. I've had a chance to talk with coach K a few times and each time I learned something. So I, that, that's a pretty simple math equation for me. That means I got to talk to coach K more times so I can learn more things. Um, he is, uh, you know, a standard setter, uh, not just in college basketball, but in all of college sports. When you look what he's been able to accomplish, build and sustain a high level program decade after decade, win championships, national championships, decade after decade, no better person that I could uh, learn from. And, um, you know, he's going to be an incredible resource. That I'm going to take advantage of as, as much as he'll allow me to. And I can't wait to get a chance to learn from him and observe uh, him uh, as a fellow coach. I think it's, it's one of the things I'm most excited about. Last question, and then I'll let you go. I know you're, I know you're busy, Kara. What, what, what made you want to be a coach? I always like to ask coaches, what, what, what made you, you know, what gave you the desire to get into coaching after a, an, an incredibly successful playing career? Well, when you've played it, when you played as long as I played, 13 years in the WNBA, um, when you stop playing, you do miss the competitiveness. You do miss the locker room. You do miss the team. 
I always loved being a part of a team as a kid. That's why I ended up choosing basketball and played a lot of sports, but um, nothing gave me that feeling like basketball did being part of a team. And nothing excited me more when I was playing about maybe the thought of having my own team one day. And you take the accumulation of all the experiences that you have and all coaches do, and you're able to now build something the way that you think it should be done. So there's tremendous ownership in that. There's tremendous responsibility in that. Um, you know, some people would say there's tremendous pressure in that. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's the highest, one of the highest levels of responsibility that we have in society. Um, I think, I mean, obviously being a parent is, is a lot of responsibility, but being a coach is, is right there. And you, I have friends over the years. I have teammates over the years. I've had coaches over the years that have been like parents to me. So the impact that you can have on young people as a coach um, is really unlike any other title besides parent that we have um, in our society. And because sports is such plays such an important role in our society. So uh, I think it's just the opportunity to impact young people and to help set their course and chart their course um, for the rest of their lives as Pat Summit did for me. Uh, that's what's uh, continue to be intriguing about coaching and now I'll have that chance at Duke University. Well, Kara, thank you for spending a few minutes. You've had a storied career and I feel like it's just beginning. Uh, I wish you the best of luck at, at Duke and, and we're, we're all rooting for, uh, for you and, and the other Coach K mm -hmm. to be cutting down nets together pretty soon. So thanks for joining Everybody Pulls the Tarp. All right. Thanks, Andrew. Have a good one.